Hello, 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 everyone, and happy Friday. It is Dr. Brandy B coming to you again at Friday at 12 noon Central Standard Time for Focus On It Friday. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Make sure you tag a friend and tell someone about all the good fun we are going to have over here with Dr. Brandy B. Today, we are all in love over here at Dr. Brandy B, and we're going to talk about love. It's the weekend of love, y'all. That's what it is. It is Valentine's Day weekend, and we want to make sure we are a part of the love that's being shown over here all weekend long. I see we have two guests with us today. Let us know who you are. Go ahead. We want to know all about it. Tell us where you're coming from, where you're watching from, and make sure you go ahead and click that share button so some other people can join in on the love. Don't be stingy with it. Share the love with someone who may need it. I am Dr. Brandy B, and I am waiting for a few more friends. I know they're coming. I am waiting for them to come on in so we can talk today about five tips for loving a differently abled child. You are going to want to hear about this. It could be a differently abled child. It could be a difficult child. It could be a difficult spouse. It could be a different type of friend. Everybody's got one person in their life who is just needing some special attention and that is what we're going to talk about today hello miss victoria she says loving you sis and i say loving you right back thank you for joining auntie louise my niece amber we've got miss dia come on in the room tell everybody go ahead and just click like and click share and make sure that somebody else can come and join us today over here at focus on it friday I'm sure you all have some amazing plans for the weekend that are going to be, of course, socially distanced and safe from COVID. But we want to start off the weekend of love talking about how to deal with, manage, get along with, help along the way those people who may be a little bit different. Amber Green says, hey there, auntie. Hey there, niece, my little sweetie pie. All right, just a few more minutes and then we will get started. I hope everyone is having a great Friday. The sun is shining a wee bit, not a whole lot. Auntie Julia has come in the building. Come on in. Thank you for joining us, Auntie Julia. It's a little bit cloudy today, and it was actually colder this morning than I thought it was going to be. For some reason, I thought it was going to be in the 60s today, and maybe that's still going to happen, but it has not happened, I don't think, as of yet. But there's no rain, so we are excited about that. We're excited about that. Let me see what the time is, 12.07, so we'll go ahead and get started. I am Dr. Brandy B, your triple board certified child and adolescent psychiatrist. Through my Facebook lives, my webinars, my upcoming books, and my intimate discussions with small groups, I help worried, overworked moms, dads, parents, grandmas, granddads, school teachers, principals, and anybody else who deals with children or people in general. Get all the education and the help that they need so that the loved one they care about can be successful in the classroom and in life. I want you to make sure you are following me right here at Dr. Brandy B. That's D-R-B-R-A-N-D-I-B. Every Friday at noon, Central Standard Time, where we are here to do what we are about to do right now. Focus on it Friday. Today, guys, we are talking about five tips for loving a differently abled child. And I'm gonna be talking about children, but I want you to know, this can be anybody. If there's anybody in your life who needs to be loved, attended to, handled in a special kind of way, then these are gonna be good tips for them. The first thing I want you to do is to learn to be patient. These are all gonna be things since it's the weekend of love. All of these are gonna be things that deal with love, which starts with L. So I want you to learn to be patient, learn to be patient. Miss Krista says she is here and we are so happy that you are welcome to Focus On It Friday. We're talking about five tips to love a loving a differently abled child but it could be an adult 
a friend, somebody who is just a little bit special in that in the way that we need to care about them. Maybe they're fragile, maybe they're emotionally, you know, traumatized. Friendships and relationships in the past have not worked. And so now they are coming to you with all of that luggage and we have to treat them a little bit differently. The first thing we need to do to loving that person is to um, learn to be patient. Learn to be patient. Remember, as I said, everyone is not made like us. Everyone is not designed like us. Everyone does not have the same experiences, the same personality, the same skill set, the same uh, ability to get up in front of a crowd of who knows how many people and speak, the, the same ability to solve a math problem as we do. And so it takes some patience when we're dealing with our children who are a little bit differently abled, differently abled. So we've got to be patient with them. We can't scream at them. We can't holler at them. We can't say, well, you were never meant to be a good friend anyway, because they have some differences in the way that they need to be attended to. So we must be patient with them. Patience is a de indeed a virtue. And sometimes in parents, in parenting especially, our patience draws thin. So what do we need to do? Be able to step away, compose ourselves. We've talked about grounding before. We need to do that. And then we can come back at such a point when we are able to be patient. Hello, Miss Sadie. Thank you for watching. We've got Chanel. We've got Della. We've got Miss Tiffany Gossa Hunt. Thank you so much for joining us. We are talking today about five tips to loving a differently abled child, but that could be differently abled um, anybody, somebody who needs special attention for whatever reason. That is what we're talking about today. The first L, because this is all about love this weekend, is to learn to be patient. The second L is to love the child you were given. Now, some people, you know, we pray for a certain child. We all think and pray and hope that our children are going to be geniuses. We all hope and pray and expect that our children are going to be political figures, uh, professional people holding many, many degrees. We expect them to be able to be leaders in the church, in the home and wherever. And sometimes that's just not the child we got. And so we must make sure that we are loving the child that we got and not the child that we prayed or hoped for. That requires a lot of insight and a lot of honesty. So many parents I have found um, are just not able to accept that the child that they were blessed with was not the child that indeed they had prayed for, that they had before, or that someone else even had. And that can cause a lot of difficulties as you are always comparing that child for what you hoped and prayed that you would get. The quicker that you can do that, the earlier that you will be able to accept whatever special needs the child that you have has, and then you can help them to move forward. It may be that your child wants to be, for example, a nurse, but when you are able to actually say, Lord, I know that you are all powerful. You make no mistakes and you can turn this situation around at any time. But right now, that is not the child that I have. In fact, the child that I have at best can be a candy striper. And that's okay. We need candy stripers. We need certified nursing assistants. We need MAs. We need LPNs. We need RNs. We need... um nurse practitioners, we need techs, we need doctors, we need everybody in the medical field, we need the secretaries. If we never knew it before, coronavirus has taught us that we need people who work in environmental services. They are the people that are wiping the rooms down between patients, between events, between spills, between everything. They are the people that are keeping our Hotels clean, our restaurants clean, our um, hospitals clean. Has anybody thought about the fact that we need them too? 
So if by chance your child can't be a nurse, but all they can do is be the housekeeper. Oh my goodness, what an important job that is. And we should make sure that they can be the best housekeeper that there is. Twice a week, I put out my trash. Some men come along in a truck and pick it up. Has anybody ever thought what would happen? What would your house smell like? What would your house look like? What would your yard look like if there weren't these men and women on that truck to take what we no longer need, scoop it up, put it on the back, drive away, and come back a couple of days later? We don't think about it like that. Everybody wants to be at the top, but it makes all kinds to make the world go round. And so what we must do is make sure that we are loving the child that we were given, because that child has some role that they can play in the world. And that role that they will play is just as important as mine or yours. So five tips for loving your differently abled child or any other person in your life. Number one is to learn to be patient. Number two is to love the child you were given. Now, number three is to let go of comparisons, right? It goes with the second one. Comparing your child to your other children, comparing your child to someone else's child, comparing your child to a fictitious character on TV, comparing your child to the student that you were, comparing your comparing yourself to the parents that your parents were. Your parents really have some good ideas mom and dad, about how to raise kids. They raise you. And if you feel like you turned out all right, they did all right. Or somebody was just looking out for you and you had luck on your side. I don't know. But there are some things that your parents did not have to contend with. They didn't have to deal with social media with you. If there was a bully at your school, when you left school, unless somehow they came to your home, there was no cell phone for them to reach out and continue to bully you on through all sorts of social media avenues. It just didn't exist. There was not the need to have name brand. I don't imagine that there is now because what we have wide access to stars who say all these names and drive all these cars and then you can't give it. Every year something goes around at Christmas time that says, don't give your child this because other children can't get it from Santa. And then there's this big debate that goes on in mommy groups about, should I not give my kid things um, because someone else can't do it from their kids? And my kids wonder why their Santa brings them this and their Santa bring them that. Make sure that you are not comparing yourself or your child or your parenting method to anybody else. If you're marrying for a second time, you can't compare yourself to that person's first spouse. There's absolutely no way in the world that you should. You are who you are, and that person needs to be loved the way that they need to be loved. Comparing yourself to their previous spouse is really not going to do you much good, except if you're trying to learn what not to do, because it didn't work out with them for some reason. So that's not anything you want to emulate or learn from. So make sure that you do not compare your kids to each other or to anyone else's children. You know, a lot of times parents will say, well, my kid didn't walk at 12. The truth, 12 months. The truth of the matter is that 12 months is really an average. Some kids walk as early as eight or nine months. Some kids walk as late as 15 months. And guess what? Any of that is normal. So don't get all bent out of shape when your kid at 13 and 14 months is still not walking, because what I'm going to say is, it's okay until 15 months. Let's check on it then. All right, remember what we talked about in our January 1st meeting, um, being, you know, focusing forward. This falls under stay in your lane. Stay under, stay in your lane, okay? If you are looking forward and not looking in the side mirrors, you really don't have a chance to know what's going on with the people on the sides of you. So it's very, very, very important that we love the child we were given 
and not the child we pray for. Now, somebody's going to say, that's so mean. That is just so mean. But we all know that none of us prayed, to, Lord, let me have a child that's going to need an IEP. Lord, let me have a child that's going to need speech. Lord, let me have a child that's going to take an inhabit, to take an inhaler. Lord, let me... I have a child who can't stay in his seat in class and is disruptive and, and the teacher calls me. We don't pray for that. We pray that our kids can go to school, can be quiet, can make all A's, and can be exceptional at everything they do. But if we find that that's not the child that we got, that we were blessed with, the main thing that we can do is love the child that we got. Somebody, was it Luther? He said, if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you with. Now, I don't know if that's some advice we want to take. But I do want to tell you that you can't send these babies back. So you need to quickly adapt and say, this is the child that I have. And they are perfect in their own right. They are. They really are perfect in their own right. Their little personalities, their little quirkiness, because we're all kind of quirky, right? All of those things make them unique and they make them yours. They are yours and they are unique. All right, let's see what some people are saying over here. We got Della, we got Auntie Roz. She says, hello, pretty girl in red today. Love you, love you, love you. We've got Sister Priscilla, Auntie Brenda, Cousin Chantrice, Miss Krista says, it's better than not having a child at all. So having that child who is differently abled or has some special needs is definitely, Miss Krista, better than having no child at all. Auntie Louise says, hello, Dr. Brandy B, Lady in Red. I am watching and listening from my bed. Ooh, that sounds fantastic, Auntie Louise. I'm so glad that you're feeling better and that you are joining us. We have certainly missed you at Focus on It Friday. We've got my good friend, Dr. Jen Mace, all the way from Indianapolis, Indiana. Thank you so much for joining. We've got Mama Rudolph. Uh, let's see, Miss Crystal says, our kids would be an answer to a prayer for the infertile. You got that right. Somebody right now is praying for the child that you are praying that they were perfect. They would be perfect for that child. And Miss Crystal, that is so good to put that into perspective um, that some people just want a child. And so we must be very careful to not complain about the children that we got. Mama says, hello, Dr. Brandy. And Miss Sadie says, amen. My good friend, Dr. Nicole Cole, all the way from Savannah, Georgia, is tuning in. Thank you for watching, Dr. Nicole. She is over there taking care of breasts, y'all. Uh, it's not October, but it is always a good time to remind you to get a mammogram if it is your time to do that. That's my good friend, Dr. Nicole Cole. Miss Krista says, I get so scared someone is going to call DHR when they see uh, her daughter th throw fits, thinking I must be doing something to her. Well, here's the thing, Miss Krista. If DHR is called and you're not doing anything, it will show. It will show. People understand that children have, again, special needs. They're differently abled. Um, and so we must live our lives. We've still got to get groceries and do whatever else. And most people honestly are understanding and say, oh, my goodness, let me whisper a prayer for that mom. She must be having a really tough time. So hopefully that's what you're going to get more than those people who are being critical. But you never know. Uh, my sister, Kena, Kena Bailey, Sissy says yes. And that may be in response to someone out there wanting a child. So we just do have to be very careful. Uh, my sister Erica has joined. Thank you so much, lady in red. Beautiful, sis. Right back at you, my love. Um, and Dr. Nicole, she says, hey, Dr. Brandy B, you are the best. And you too, if you're over in Savannah or anywhere in that area and you are having some problems with your breast, uh, go over and check out Dr. Nicole Cole. She will take good care of you. My first lady, Miss Barbara Young, is here. Thank you so much, Miss Barbara Young, Sister Young, for joining us. We're talking today, guys, about the five tips for learning a uh, loving a differently abled child. It's a weekend of love, y'all. Everybody's talking about love. The red is everywhere. Y'all know I love red. Red is everywhere. Pink is everywhere. We're talking about love. We're giving out hearts and kisses and hugs. And oh my God, Cupid is just going to be busy, 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 busy. Hopefully Cupid can find some shiny stuff for me. Cupid, if you're listening, shiny stuff will do for this holiday season. But if not, we are just grateful for your presence, Cupid. We are uh, grateful for your presence. Uh, Dr. Nicole is shouting out Columbus GA. <laughs> We've got Miss Vicky Bowlin joining. Hello, hello, hello. So five tips for loving your differently able child. Loving 
Love starts with an L. So we're going to learn to be patient, right? We are going to love the child that you were given and not anybody else's child, the child that you pray for even. And we are going to let go of comparisons. Comparisons can just make you forget the fact that you need to be grateful, right? Now, there's nothing wrong. Don't get me wrong about saying, oh, hey, girl. Oh, your kid is your kid was talking by two. Oh, maybe I need to tell my doctor about that. But to sit, <laughs> my kid isn't talking in their six months. I thought complete sentences. No, we need to first figure out what is typical development. And then we need to go from there. That's why you need to Google cautiously, but be in close contact with your doctor. Miss Shanika Bird, that's my coach, y'all. Coach Bird stays on me. She's got some lovely young children and big kids as well. Dr. Inkerica, that's my friend up in New York, y'all. She has been fighting COVID since the very beginning, and we are so grateful that she has not gotten COVID. Uh, we are so very grateful for that. Thank you for what you do. And, uh, Sister Priscilla says, bring on the shine. Yes, y'all know I have to make it blinged up for you all over here at Focus on the Friday. Let's get going, y'all. That was number three. Number four, we've got to listen. And this goes for anybody, whether it's a friend, whether it's a co-worker, whether it's a, uh, a spouse, um, your child, whomever, we've got to listen. Now, I'm going to try to get this right. Uh, a young lady in one of my mommy groups said that when we're dealing with people, we need to, let me get it right, y'all. Hold on. Listen to be, listen to understand, then to be understood. That is a mouthful, y'all. So often we want to give advice, give advice, give advice, give our point of view. But the first thing we need to do is gain understanding. How do we gain understanding if we're talking? We can't because you're talking over them. They're trying to tell you something. We must listen to our kids. Of course, I want my kids to be successful. Of course, I want them to be doctors and lawyers and presidents of the United States. Of course. But if my kid wants to work at the local fast food place, I need to listen to that. And I need to understand why. And my child may say, because I like French fries. And at my child's age, that's appropriate. Two, four, and six. If they say that to me, then I'm going to say, well, let's talk about that. If you are only cooking fries, you can't live like your dad and I are affording you to live. But I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to get you connected with a fry dropper. I'm also going to get you connected with some people that own some places where they're dropping fries. Because I know some of those people. That's the kind of thing we need to do. If you want to teach your kid all about the kitchen, then just take them in there and point things out as they go to them. So if they wander over to the stove, name it. Stove. Hot. Right? But if you try to force them to do things in the kitchen, they won't catch on as quickly. So we must listen to our kids because they're going to tell us what they need. They're going to tell us what they want. They're going to tell us when it's too much. And there's a thin line between encouraging and gently pushing your child and then on the other end, completely pushing them away from you. And you've got to know when to stop. Otherwise, they will go away from you when they graduate and they'll be so happy that they'll never come back. So you do not want to strain the relationship with anyone. So you've got to gain understanding, seek understanding, and then to be understood. Hope that makes sense to y'all. Y'all still here? Is this good? Seek understanding. Somebody just write seek understanding in the chat for me. Seek understanding. Let's see what we've got over here. Oh, we've got some good stuff. Miss Nicole. Um, yes, yes, yes. We've got a differently able task force in Jack and Jill. Dr. Nicole, unfortunately, I don't know very much about how to get my... Uh, you know, longer messages. I, sometimes I can't see them all. But you're saying tune in to Dr. Bowling weekly on Fridays. Great info. Yes, great info. 12 Central Standard Time. That's 1 o'clock over in Columbus, GA. Thank you so much. Um, let's see what's got. Okay, Miss Crystal says amen. Miss Mandy Hughes Sexton says, I love my child with my whole heart. If she wouldn't have gone or been going through what she has 
she wouldn't be who she is or have the personality she does today. Absolutely. Miss Mandy Hughes, Sixton, you bring up such a valid point. It is our experiences in life in general that make us who we are. You know, I can think about some things and I almost want to say, I wish I had it. But some of that stuff brought me to where I am today. So I don't wish away the past and I honestly don't wish away the future. Now, sometimes I do say I'll be glad when my kids can go and like, if I tell them it's it's on the bed on the right side at the front, bring it to me. I'll be glad when they can do that because right now, and I think they just don't want to, they say, I didn't see it. But in general, I don't wish away the past and I honestly don't wish away the present. When it's time for me to get to those next steps, we will. But for right now, I've got one in diapers, I've got one in pre-K, and I've got one in kindergarten. And that's the way it's going to be. And I enjoy these moments because soon I'll have two driving and one trying to drive. Um, and then, you know, later after that, I'll have three in college at the same time. So I'm very cautious about what I wish for. And I certainly don't try to wish away the past because it made me who I am today. It made me who I am today. It gives character, right? And so we just, that is a very important point, Miss Mandy. And thank you so much for sharing. Um, let's see. Miss uh, Coach Bird says, that's good. Coach Bird, y'all, is helping me get uh, my get my mind and my body together. So when I'm on these stages, y'all, I'm going to be right. I'm, I'm, I'm back. I'm back with her. Miss uh, uh, Toynette, I think that's right. Toynette, I think she's in my uh, workout class. We are grinding, trying to get it together. Seeking understanding. Everybody's seeking understanding. Seeking understanding. Thank y'all so much for seeking understanding. We need more teachers chiming in. It should be required. Um, well, you know, honestly, right now, Miss Krista, the teachers are teaching. So what I am going to do is start having a separate time for my teachers and a step, separate space for them. Uh, because you're absolutely right. It is important for teachers to understand all of this that we're talking about. Um, um, it's important for them. But right now, they're, they're just teaching. They're doing um, the task that so many of us say, uh -uh, we can't do. All right. A grandmother told me yesterday, I just didn't know I was signed enough to be a teacher. And it made me say in my mind, thank God for teachers. So if there are any teachers out there in the world, every once in a while, I'll have a couple of teacher friends join in. Thank you. Miss uh, Toynette says, yes, my 10 year old never sees anything. Isn't that a mess? So you mean to tell me at 10 is still not going to be? Oh, my goodness. You just ruined the whole moment for me. Miss Toynette just ruined it. But that's all right. I, I guess I'll just go get it. Uh. They grow up so fast, Auntie Louise says. Absolutely. She, uh, Coach Bird says, girl, my 16-year-old never sees anything, and I could explain where it is to the money. Y'all are not giving me hope. I thought this was going to get better by the time we were eight. I was giving the big boy two more years, and y'all say even 10 years from now, he's not going to see it. Miss Krista says, I am trying to learn to lose weight from learning how to uh, to fast from those monks. Yes, learning to lose weight, that is definitely a task. Go over to see Coach Bird. She can get you together. Auntie, you know I still miss things, says Amber. Lord, have mercy. We're going to just keep praying. We're going to keep praying. Um, Byzantine monks at Mount A-T-H-O-S. I'm not familiar with that, Miss Crystal. I'll have to Google it when we're done. Miss Toynette says, I always wish for my now 19-year-old to hurry up and graduate, and now I miss her. But she was that problem child. She was a problem child. And I told y'all, y'all, I'm sorry. I don't always know, get my fingers right. But she was that problem child, and we, I'm imagining that down there, it says that y'all bumped heads. Uh, it doesn't get any better, says Miss Robin Tyus. <sighs> and it's worse when they are grown. <laughs> Look, y'all are ruining the whole vibe. Don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I give all these explicit instructions, and they come back with, it wasn't there. I didn't see it. And I'm like, did somebody move it? And there it is when I go look at it. We've got Cousin Tiffany Turner. We've got my good older cousin Paritha joining us. All right, here we go. Gonna get back on focus. Y'all know I like to get off track. We got five tips for loving a differently able child. The first thing, learn to be patient. If you are not patient, 
Oh boy, somebody might get hurt. Number two, love the child you were given. All right, love the child you were given. If you love the child you were given, it's gonna make it easier for you and for them. Number three, let go of comparisons. Comparisons almost speak to um, ungratefulness. And we don't want anybody to think we're not grateful because we definitely love our children. And now there's nothing wrong with continuing to encourage your children, but make sure you don't push them off the ledge in doing so. Fourth thing you want to do is listen. Listen to your children. They will tell you what they need. They will tell you what they want. And you know, back when I was growing up, the, the, the saying was that children were to be seen and not heard. The fact of the matter, though, is that there is a time and a place for everything, but our kids need to be heard. And mom and dad, grandma, granddad, teacher, friends, and pals, you need to make sure that you are there to listen. And this is to me as well. Make sure you aren't so occupied in your own love life. Make sure you aren't so occupied in your own social media life. Make sure you aren't so occupied in your job or jobs. Make sure you aren't so occupied in all your extracurricular activities as you continue to climb up yourself that you miss the things that your children are saying to you for that is very important. Sometimes they only say it once and they say it in a really quiet, still voice. And if you are talking over them or just trying to ha 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 while you're doing something else, you're going to miss it. And that's how things get missed and they can be very, very, very costly. Next thing you want to do is lead, allow them to lead. And I alluded to that by listening. You want to lead and that is to allow them to lead. Let them tell you what they need. Let them tell you when they want to do it. Now, of course, you've got to give some restrictions, right? And some boundaries. Um, but uh, in general, make sure that you're listening to your child. If your child absolutely does not want to go to college and they barely he just, just made it out of high school and they are really good at a craft. You have noticed that they know how to cut grass and make that crisscross angle uh, like nobody else can. Get them a lawnmower if that's what they want to do. Invest in a lawnmower. And then as they get busy and the money starts rolling in, then maybe slide in. Now, baby, remember when you lost this amount of money because you need this system to deal with your customers. Or you may want to go and take this business class at the community college. But don't, don't push them to a four-year school and then everybody's frustrated by December and they are invited to not return. Just let them, you know, just allow them to lead the discussion, their life. Now, again... Going back into the kitchen and the stove, I would never watch my child put their hand on a hot eye. I never would do that. But as long as the oven is off and cool and they're old enough to understand that at some point it could be hot, then I'm going to let them explore. Let's open the door, see what's in there. Now, if y'all follow me, y'all know I don't cook. So I don't know much about an oven, but I know structurally what it's supposed to do. <laughs> All right. So. Make sure that we're just there to encourage them and to gently push, all right? And then our bonus, number six, is to lighten the mood. You gotta lighten the mood, parents. You gotta laugh. Some of this stuff that these kids do, you simply gotta laugh about it. We have a two-year-old daughter. None of our other children did anything with crayons except, well, maybe that middle boy. You gotta watch out for him. He wrote on TV. This little girl, y'all, we never know when we may go somewhere and find writing on something she's written on our living room chair and yes we are that that we are that family our living room is a room that you don't go into there's no reason to we have a den we have a sitting we have all these other rooms but she went in that living room y'all with a purple crayon and she took it to the back of a very expensive brand new cream chair now, somebody told me she was a budding artist. I would prefer that her canvases be either paper or some other approved object that we approve, not her. But we just laugh about it, right? We laugh about it. Somebody said, well, y'all should have been watching her. These kids are busy. We laugh about it and we move on because guess what? It's an item. Nobody died. Nobody was hurt. If it came down to it, we got Scotch Guard protection. We know how to spray stuff on it. Somebody said, just put this on it, it'll come off. If all else fails, we'll go get another one, right? But you gotta lighten the mood. If you stay uptight, mad, praying all the time, and I love to pray, but you miss out on stuff because you are still hoping and praying that your kid is gonna turn into something else. 
Now, I hope that this child will stop writing on our walls and our stuff. And old enough, she's going to, and eventually she's going to get old enough for us to really discipline her in a way. But now, right now, she's exploring. She's figured out that if I hold that thing in my hand and I do this, magic happens. And I'm glad that she's finding out that there's an if then. But eventually, she's not going to be able to learn that lesson under my watch and on my dime. If she wants to do that in her own house or maybe one of you all want to bring her with you then we might, you know, be able to look at that and you'll be bringing her back. That's my sweetie pie. Love her to pieces. But we have to lighten the mood. Parents, get you a drink of sweet tea or unsweetened tea or whatever it is that you drink. Hard lemonade, whatever. I don't know. Drink responsibly because that's what sometimes parents do. But if you find that you need a drink morning, noon, night, and all in between, that's problematic. We don't want you to get that light where you're two sheets in the wind and floating. We don't want that. But you might need to unwind. Valentine's Day is coming up. Make sure that you are lighting the lightening the load if you have a spouse, significant other, whatever. Or even if you have yourself, put the kids to bed and make sure that you tell yourself, I love me. We tell our kids all the time, make sure that you tell yourself. Make sure that you tell yourself. And in fact, that's where that this talk came from. I said to my husband, what am I going to talk about today? He said, love yourself. And I said, okay, that's a good point, but we need to talk about it a little bit more. But the truth of the matter is that when we love ourselves, we get to share that with our kids. They know that we love ourselves. They know that we love them. And then we can teach them to love themselves as well. We can teach them that. So the five tips to loving a differently abled child, differently abled spouse, differently abled coworker, differently abled boss, differently abled whoever. Learn to be patient. Love the child or the friend or whatever you were given, not the one you prayed for. Let go of comparisons. They are dangerous. And they can make you forget all the great things that you have because you're looking over there. I still love my January 1 presentation. Go check it out if you have time. Listen to your children, your spouse, or whomever else because they will tell you what you need to know. And when you're listening, you want to listen to first gain understanding and then to be understood. You want to lead. Let them do it. You want to lead by following. So let your child lead. And then you want to lighten the mood with whatever it is that you enjoy doing. Let's go back up here and see what we got here. Um, let's see. Miss Krista says, I taught myself to ignore my six-year-old's tantrums and now it's hard to listen to anything. I did that to deal with getting angry at her angry tantrums. And I tell all of my parents, ignoring is a beautiful skill. Many parents don't know it. Many parents immediately resort to screaming. But ignoring is such a powerful tool. Now, you can't ignore them when they're about to fall off the top of the steps. But if they're at the bottom and they have passed out because you brought them to the bottom, so they wanted to come to the bottom on their own, but you know that developmentally they're not able to do that. So you picked them up and brought them to the bottom and now they're mad because they're at the bottom, but they don't know how to get to the top. Just ignore them. Don't get upset. There's nothing to see here. Miss Shaniqua has the O. All right. Let's see. Miss Crystal says, these kids are really smart. They know how to get what they want. And I can say that they are very, very smart. And they will play parents against each other. They'll even have you question, did I say that? So you got to be sharp. You got to be well rested. That goes into lightening the mood. Be well rested. Relax. Laugh. You know, all that stuff is important. Miss Tornette says, and I hope I say, put put a uh, hi, say your name. I hope I'm saying it right. Krista, uh, my youngest, was doing that. She just turned nine, so I'm hoping that she grows out of it. Usually, the tantrums will stop. We do have to be very vigilant about helping them to stop because sometimes they don't stop on their own, and then we end up with kids who are stealing our cars and standing over us and daring us to say anything about it, so we don't want that. Priscilla says she was writing her name. I still need her to write it on paper. I welcome her writing her name. She just needs to write it on 
paper, she can come to your house. We'll bring her with all her pens and pencils, pack her up and send her over to your house. Auntie Erica says she'll take her. Y'all will make it far. Coffee IV drip. Yes, yes. Popping champagne. Mama says she's an artist, but you didn't let me write on your stuff. And now all of a sudden, my baby girl's an artist. Y'all see how this works with grandparents? She's an artist. But I couldn't do that. All right, when they get too quiet, you better check them out, Auntie Louise. I don't even know when they did that. That was pretty darn quiet and sneaky. Uh, let's see. Miss Toynette says, I've learned from upbringing. I have learned from upbringing is that our parents didn't allow us to express ourselves. Like, uh, Just like saying, Mom, I don't like how you said that to me. It hurt my feelings. We were just told, whatever, get over it. But we have taught our children to express themselves. We absolutely have taught our children to express themselves. And we absolutely need to make sure that we're listening to them. Children are doing some amazing things. Just look around the country. They are leading things. They are already leaders. You know, we didn't say the children are the future, but the children are right now. And so we definitely need to be listening to them. I learned all kinds of things from my kids. And why do they know so much? They know so much because of the things that many of you are watching me on right now. You're watching me either on a telephone or you're watching me on a, a computer. But there is some sort of device that gives these kids access to the world. So we definitely need to be listening to them. Just listen. Sometimes they don't even have to be talking to you. Listen to what they're saying to their friends. Listening to what the computer is saying to them. Listen to the video games. I've gotten up several times to go and say, what did that video game just say? Because I know I have parental controls on, but that doesn't mean that something may not slip through. So you've got to always be on your A-game as parents. Because I can be sitting in here with you right now, sitting here with a patient, and hear something go on out there. Because I have spidey senses. God has blessed parents with that. Um, and so supersonic ears. I can, you know, something that's not right. You can hear a whisper if it's something they're not supposed to be saying. So make sure that you pay attention to that and act on it. Miss Crystal says, my daughter is a teacher. She watches you now. Sixth grade reading teacher at Tuscaloosa. Oh, I did not know that. That is awesome. Tell her thanks. And um, we hope that she is able to catch us at an appropriate time. We don't want anybody losing their jobs because y'all know that I have three small kids. I can't, you know, take care of anybody else. But I tell her to be looking out. We're definitely going to have something for teachers coming up. Mama says, love is patient and kind, and you need to change your name. That's what my mom would always do. She says, my name is not Mama, and I'm not telling you what my name is. So I had no way to contact her. But I was a smarty pants, so I got around that. All right, Miss Anissa Hyder, thank you for joining. Tone yet? Tone yet? Tone yet. Tone yet. Tone yet. Tone yet. I hope that's right. Miss McCool is with us. If the, if tone yet is not right, like T-O-N-E, let me know. All right. Miss Sissy McCool, when will the teenage attitude go away? Oh, my goodness. When they're no longer teenagers. Uh-uh. I have Miss McCool a... um presentation on why is my child so moody i think it was april 28th go look up at the um that's around called her auntie one time that's my church member y'all she comes every week she and miss um miss marvier are usually here uh they're my adopted aunties now but i don't see miss marvier today but miss sadie says my two-year-old granddaughter wrote on my wall when i was babysitting her oh my goodness i know you want to pass out the good thing I have to remind myself is that we have extra paint, and if we don't, we uh, know where it was bought, and we have the name of it. So we're just going to wait until she's out of that phase, and then we'll paint everything. I mean, she wrote on my door, y'all. The door. Who writes on the door? Oh, my goodness. But, yes, we love them nonetheless. Miss Crystal says, I want a real-life parent support group in Lamar County. Well, Miss Crystal, why don't you do this? Why don't you get it started? Get it started. Go ahead and get it started. Y'all can support each other. Yeah, I love it. I love that idea. We've got Miss um, Miss Kathy, Bulls Kathy Tadras. Thank you for joining us. And um, she does not watch live. LOL. Okay, great, great, great. We don't want your daughter to be watching live if she has, um, if she has class. But we do want to reach out to the teachers 
uh, at a time that is good for them. I know it's a tough time for teachers right now. We want you to know that we really appreciate you all. Uh, here in Birmingham, everybody is virtual doing distance learning. Um, and the good thing is that the kids are still learning in real time. So parents, make sure that you're doing your job as a parent. You got to listen to them. You got to be patient with them. Um, and I recognize that everybody doesn't have the ability to do what I do, which is to bring someone in to be with my kids because I'm with other people's kids all day long. And so it's just not fair that my kids have to have a little bit of peace of me, uh, during the school day. So that's what I do, but make sure that we're attending to our kids. Make sure that we're showing them some love. Most importantly, make sure you're showing yourself some love. What time is it? Let me get out of here. All right. Five tips to loving the differently abled person in your life. Learn to be patient. Love the child you were given, not the child you wished or prayed for. Let go of comparisons. Listen to your child. Lead, that is to allow them to lead, and then you follow them in their learning and in conversations. So many times parents have said, you didn't tell me that, uh, you know, talking to their child when I ask them what drugs they've used, and they say, well, I smoke marijuana. You didn't ever tell me that. Did you ever ask them? Did you ever allow them to be able to say that? And then the bonus is to lighten the mood. So make sure, parents, that you're taking this weekend as a time to lighten the mood. The mood definitely needs to be lightened, and we do... Um, Thank you for being good parents. Um, nobody may not ever tell you that. Your kids certainly may not. But my kids are super sweet. And they tell me that all the time. But I want y'all to know I love you all. I love you all because you come over here and hang out with me. But I also love you all because you all are good parents. You are either good parents who are still parenting adults. Because guess what? We still need some help too. Um, or you are parents who are in the thick of it with me. Who are And we're trying to figure it out, y'all. We're trying to figure it out as we go. Sometimes you've got these adult children. Sometimes you've got these independent two-year-olds. Um, and we're and, and all in between, and we're trying to figure it out. So I appreciate you all for being with us. Miss um, Crystal says, thank you for your time. Thank you for yours and for being here. If nobody would listen to me, there'd be no reason for me to talk. So thank you all. Auntie Rosalyn says, thank you for giving us knowledge. Thank you for coming to listen to it and for being such a, a major part in my getting all this knowledge. All the way back to me speaking on stages. I talk about speaking on stages, but my stages were at church, y'all. Long, long, long time ago as a little bitty, bitty girl at church in a little bitty, bitty four-room school. You know, that's where it began. So nothing that you do with your child is small. Everything matters, guys. So make sure that you're keeping your kids involved. Mama says, good information as always. Thank you for showing up as always. Paritha, my cousin, says, thanks for this very encouraging word. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. She says, I love everyone. I don't have to know you, but that is what keeps us all together. Love one another. You are absolutely right. Absolutely right. My auntie, Eva Bryant, is joining in from Philadelphia area. We thank you so much for joining us and for always stopping by to hang in there with us. Miss Crystal says, God is good, and y'all know that I know he is good. And my auntie says, hello, my beautiful niece, and I say, hello, my beautiful auntie all right guys i'm going to get out of here if there is nothing else if you had a good time just put in the chat for me good time just let me know you had a good time just let me know you had a good time and go on and put a red heart there so we can know that it's valentine's day weekend I had a good time. Just say good time, guys. Good time. I hope that everybody has a good weekend. I hope that you all will share this video. I hope you all will help me get my numbers up. There are some more people that need to hear about Dr. Brandy B. Don't keep me to yourself. If you like it, somebody else will too. And guess what? You've got at least one friend who has a child, grandchild, neighbor, church member. It may even be you or your own child yourself who needs this information. And this is what I am here to do. Y'all will see that my website is coming up soon. Y'all were just so nice in your responses about my picture. I just absolutely love y'all. I looked over there and saw that and I went, oh my goodness, these people might actually like me. Y'all are just so kind with your words and I appreciate that. 
And, um, you know, my book is coming up. You'll be hearing more about that. We're going to start doing some challenges. I'm going to be opening up a Facebook group for moms who we're going to be doing some stuff beside this. We're going to really be deep diving into some of those parenting skills, some of those things that Miss Krista talked about. Uh, it won't be closed to Lamar County, Miss Krista, but you'll be welcome to join. We're going to be having a good time over there. Um, but please go ahead and share it. Doesn't matter where you are. We, as long as there's an internet, I'm going to be coming to you and talking to you and sharing all this good love. All right, y'all, I'm going to get out of here. I am Dr. Brandy B., your triple board certified pediatrician, adult psychiatrist, and child and adolescent psychiatrist. Through my Facebook Lives, my webinars, my books, my upcoming lectures, and so, so, so much more that I have in store, I help worried moms, dads, church members, loved ones of any child, any adult, get the education that they need so that the loved one in their life, especially the children, can be successful in the classroom and in life. Make sure you're following me at Dr. Brandy B. That's D-R-B-R-A-N-D-I-B. D-R-B-R-A-N-D-I-B. I am here every Friday at 12 noon Central Standard Time, and I am always looking for a good time to share with you all. As I say always, I love you all because y'all show me so much love, and I am going to wish you all the best Cupid Valentine's Day weekend, and I will see you all next week. Toodles. Bye-bye.